Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Reboot Review, colon, It's, it's alphanumeric. alphanumeric. I'm Robin. I'm Katie. And today we're going to be watching the episode where no sprite has gone before. And this episode, I'm just going to come out and say it. I think this episode is a hot mess. <laughs> this one is probably in, like, my bottom five for sure. Mm -hmm. But I feel like this is not a widely shared opinion somehow, which is strange to me. I know. Well, it's... Okay, so we've gone back to me not seeing the episode. I've been in advance, <laughs> so we're getting a very fresh look from Katie. Right, so we're going down memory lane again for me. But I do remember actually enjoying it. But I think that's because I really enjoyed the weird characters that show up but never come back. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I, like I, but it's true. Like, like I, oh, this is interesting. This and like I don't remember being super critical of it when I first saw it. Mm -hmm. It's just going back and watching it now that I'm like, what is this? doing where is it going I'm i don't understand why any of this is happening see, yeah and, if it's gonna happen to me and i have to add um that like because this is such an off episode for me i hopped onto imdb to like look up some credits because i was like oh maybe it's a first time writer or something because that often explains episodes that feel a little bit off um and first off that's where i got the impression not everyone feels the same way about this episode because by the time you get into season three the imdb ratings from one episode to the next are all pretty much like 9.3. This one's 9.5. This one's 9.6. Like everyone seems to like them basically equally well. But this was still one of like the higher ones. So I'm like, is it just me? But I looked up the writer on this episode thinking maybe it was going to be a newbie. Totally the opposite. The writer is DC Fontana and she's kind of a legend from the looks of things. DC Fontana has written on every iteration of star trek since the original series up until like voyager at least i think wow yeah she's written a couple of episodes on all of them including the animated series and not only that but she has kids credits too she's got like credits on he-man masters of the universe so and also like other shows i wrote down here she's written for babylon 5 dallas bonanza six million dollar man like she almost wonder like uh, being so, uh, like because they probably said, listen, you do your sci-fi thing. Yeah. And you make it as cool as you want. And it clearly explains the Star trek -y clash of civilizations angle that this episode very much has. Right. And I think maybe that's part of it. And then, but also most of those Star Trek episodes are like an hour. That's what I'm wondering. Because it feels like they're trying to do a lot in this episode with a little bit of time but then that's why i was a little bit surprised when i saw that she had a lot of kids television credits right. because at first i was like oh maybe she doesn't really know how to tell this kind of story in half an hour but if she's written for lots of kids she should she should like right. there's nothing about the situation that makes sense to me except maybe that i think an episode is kind of bad that everyone else agrees is extremely good and i'm just weird like i don't know but i'm excited to watch it and decide yeah. whether or not i still like it yeah so we're gonna really start nervous. watching that episode and you can see how you feel about where no sprite has gone before now that we're going back and reviewing it as the name of the show says so we're going to start playing that episode right now i live in the game back to the matrix voice mm -hmm. Opening Sweet. syrupy grit. <laughs> he does have a great voice. He's a really good casting choice this for this place. role, I think. Yes, yeah. Main yeah. Frame. My home. Has he done what has he done lately? I don't I haven't seen what Paul Dobson's done lately, actually. That's a good question. I really because I used to I used to be really into following the careers of all these like Vancouver voice actors and was pretty up and up on what they did that was back when i used to watch more anime too i find right so you'd be able to see where they were <laughs> where they were and now i just don't follow any of that stuff anymore so i don't know where where these guys are getting work i'll be nowadays. honest though, i can format. hear any of the I pj mask no voices in different shows there's one who's on chirp cbc's on show oh or, yeah and then another pj mask character mm -hmm. Alette. she's also on Charm, charm, charmkins, or charm something, charm girls, <laughs> charm faces. Yeah, now that you've like gone down an <laughs> no. age group in the television, that really, we're... really hip onto the <laughs> child voice actor scene. scene. Yeah. Game over. Andrea's log, game date unknown. We've entered a new system with the hope of finding mainframe. 
once again were met with failure. With each passing system, Matrix grows more despondent. And I fear if we don't find Mainframe soon, he'll give up all hope of ever finding home. Okay, so here's where this starts for me. So, okay, we've come in with the Star Trek angle. Andrea out. How long has Andrea been keeping a log? But also, like, it came where in. Where is she had, keeping it? it right. <laughs> but, it, like, it had her voiceover as they beamed in. And it was like, oh, like, it's narration over the action. But then she actually says Andrea out in her little thing. So she's here talking about Matrix. While Matrix is just, like, five feet away from her. I just... It's her motivational test. I, mean, I think it is. So like, yeah, a guy who looks like Bob, Look and this is now going to be like the crux of the episode. Yeah, is this this Rob Cursor dude who Giga Girl email net maneuver. Now. He like established pretty early on as not Bob, and yet it still seems to like linger with Matrix. Right. How much he seems like him. And like already, we've basically seen the crux of the first thing that kind of cover? gets to me about this episode is that we've got all these characters who are clearly like superhero types they're talking and Try acting and in this like superhero way so. and they're very clear about this like super friends angle but we also jumped right what out of the gate doing, with Mr. a star trek reference with andrea's <laughs> law right so right. there's the star and i'm i know that Reboot will like kind of mix and match their references, but they usually at least have one predominant no, one. Right. And well, this one is just like, is it Star Trek myself. or is it Super Friends? Like, I, I really Robert wanted Cursor, them to pick one. Leader of the Hero I, Selective. I actually get what you're I'm saying. Matrix. It's true. Like, it is and I like the, the whole lightsaber coming system. out. It's like, that, and yeah, and play. like, how, how no much do we need to, to be going game. on here? The user must win. Only then will the spectrals listen. Why would you want to lose? Don't you know the damage well, especially too, with these spectrals being <laughs> all uniform in you know the same way that the about. aliens yeah. are. All, like, it's always like the humanoid. Power lock, Although please. I guess Star Trek, they, they had different new to races system. of characters. They did, yeah. But on this, they weren't like, they all, you know, Captain, they had, they were human I with ridges on their face. Yeah, yeah. Nanoseconds. I'm like, okay, this is clearly the Spock type force. character. Yeah. But she's also a superhero. Like, always. Where did they come from? Why does she, yeah. I'll explain everything. Now they do, and this was a plot point that I had forgotten from having seen this episode before. They do explain their origin to some degree, but not why they have superpowers. I'm not familiar with the term. Yeah, I do remember that they're one in the same. Yeah. So I did not remember that because, again, this episode is kind of all over the place, and I feel like I never know what's happening in it. Right, it's classic Trekkie kind of sounds. Yeah, oh, the sounds do so much to define. Star Trek, it's amazing. That like audio design they do is so iconic. It's quite a place you got here. You know, Matrix, your friend is right. The Hero Selective is purposely damaging our system. Also, there's a very that large lack of music. No, it's not. That Yet it's the only way I we find can get kind of off putting in this episode. I don't know why, like, I don't think Reboot uses a ton of incidental music, but it, like, this is another why episode bother? where it feels like there's all kinds it of empty space like got the in it. Advantage. Right. I'm sorry, but you're wrong. But all, all to achieve the a motif that they can't yeah, quite that, decide that, Yeah, exactly. You betrayed your race, and now you betray your function. You are the traitors! You betrayed us! So be quiet, or I'll... Do nothing. Andrea, is you must understand. Is that cigar part of him? Once like, is we that, were like them. Is that we were once like this an actual cigar. Yeah, yeah, that's a good question, actually. Is it built in like an action figure would be? Yeah, exactly. when the games first came, there was no defense. I do like her like glossy skin texture, though. That's kind of cool. Yeah, she is very I like her character design. We volunteered. Our mission was to And I wonder if they made her green as kind of like an allusion to Dot. Because she's kind of like... Oh, no maybe. His like... Before. Best buddy sidekick kind that of character. That was five cycles ago. Now we want to go back. Liar. You were seduced by the flesh and rejected your spectral state. The games have turned you into barbarians. You no longer belong in the spectral selective. But we've grown tired of the games and want to return. So I think the thing is no. like... 
I get this very Star trek concept they've come up with, in that our heroes have beamed themselves into a situation where there's a... Captain. A conflict happening within an alien home. race about whose Logic. role is to do what and who gets to do what and why they're doing it. We're and like, this is very, very Star Trek. Here. But Did so much of this right. episode is There's like, no reasoning with them. like in we Star Trek, it sort of listen. made sense the role that they played friend, in it. And this, the whole of this episode, I'm just others. like, why are Matrix and Andrea even here? What are they contributing to this Captain, conversation? Right. Also, that's like the weirdest cut. Yes, that was it. And like, it's like, it's like they're trying to change, like it was sort of like Good fading idea, out, like they were changing scene. Right. But then it's just more of the same scene. Hey, <laughs> and who is this guy? Why do we care about, like, it's like, oh, there's a bartender. We never see him again. It was like they just needed a bar to show all the different powers of the characters. No! Yeah. A little show off time. Spectrum, this also. Gone. They turned their back. But how? for There's a no minute yeah. and then it's like no they disappeared like that know. that whole scene you literally what? existed so they could turn their backs <laughs> and let the spectrals <laughs> disappear I just... to get to her you gotta go through me why andrea why did you do it you've jeopardized everything we've worked for no one deserves to be hunted and caged well maybe we should cage you instead don't bother i'm leaving you're not, not going, going anywhere. anywhere. Try and stop me. Magic and Where did she go? Yeah, and like she must have run out to meet her spectral friends. There was a need more very, hostages. very early episode where I, I, I can't see. remember off the top of my head what it is, and I feel like I should remember. Where um Bob uses like what is it, a hidden file command? Agreed. Right. No, that was that was the Crimson Bino. Right. When Mouse leaves that little bit of code for him and he managed to escape. And then he pops out afterwards and is just like, hidden file command, gotta love him, or whatever his very Bob-like line was. Right. But, like, Andrea here just... What about him? ...disappeared. Yeah, that's right. Well, and Matrix, she's... Are you you're going to see she comes us? back in a moment. I'm with you. And but there's I'm no... The hidden file uh, command. Yeah, yeah she doesn't... Right and even, oh, even if she short. said that, I would be like, oh, we're alluding back to a thing that we've already established. Right. Perfect. Makes total sense. Believe yeah. it or not... But, I don't like yeah, the no. hunt any more than you do. Although, to to argue or at devil's advocate, yeah, of course. Like okay. the reason of them, like them being superheroes, now. is I can I understand what they're trying leave. to. You call say me like they took on the human what form and yeah. then like the each, you know, they're sign. they're it the manifests their cursor you magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can see an in-world. I, I can see an in universe explanation. But I, I agree I that it shouldn't have felt so superhero -y. Yeah. Like they really should have had a uniform or something. Yeah, yeah like. In the web. Who knows how it could have changed? Or again, like Star Trek established them as different kinds of human or sprite like size. characters, yeah, right? Yeah, I see what you're saying on that. Until yeah. now. Then why don't you go to them? Maybe I will. I find this place stifling. Fine. Fine. Oh. And, like, this whole thing just seems to have been set up to give them an argument, you know? Like, it's... Yeah. Uh, and also, I just have to point out, the resolution of Andrea was dis Andrea disappearing was simply her dropping from the ceiling. I don't know if you caught that. She just um, drops back down, ka chunk. And I'm like, you don't where did you go? You How did you get up there? We're like... I want to help There was you. no explanation was for how you suddenly went poop command, and then ended then up in the roof. Like just checking out the ceiling. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Still and also, there. like, there's nothing. I think the other thing that gets me is it establishes straight away that Andrea is on the spectral side, like right off the bat. But there's nothing to make specific to Andrea's character that makes me think, yeah, Andrea would totally have seen these spectrals being caught and have been like, that's not fair. Especially given at the very beginning of the episode, when these new people appear and Matrix just decides he's gonna like aim gun at them, Andrea was the one. Who said, oh no, let's wait and see, right? Mm -hmm. And then I guess once she saw us, she just simply made up her mind. But there's nothing especially Andrea about what she's doing or how she's behaving. Yeah, to why me. she should be so passionate about that. Enough I'd to like have a fight with Matrix over exactly it. It was pretty like, much she's always like logical enough well. to know yeah. that like Bigger maybe problems. there's a really good reason for there them to be caged. To be yeah, and it, it like all of it just seems system. like a conceit set up oh, just to create a conflict between Matrix and Andrea. 
But if Which I did realize down, the last episode of this that I was, like, assembling, that I've been pronouncing it wrong the whole time. It's now. Andrea. 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 I always say so I'm going to try to say, me too. We must hey, Andrea. Andrea. So I'm going to endeavor to use Andrea. Don't more. touch me. Just mend the tear. Not in this form. Then in which one? Guardian? No. Spectral. What have you done? Why have you brought her here? You've doomed us all! She's here to help. She saved our lives back at the hero's den. I like her hair, it's glowing. It is, fools. yeah. Can't you see? Neat lighting. It was a trick to gain your confidence and entry to the principal office. It was no trick. Now pipe down. I've got to get the system error isolated. There. Only sound effects, I a but the no music. Sector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the the music they bring in just for the stings, and I mean, I feel like Reboot does a fair bit of that in general. But I don't know. They just, I don't know why it feels like there's so much Cares, silence in this episode to me. But like, I feel like there's a lot of sort of dead space going on, and we almost kind of go back to that weird pacing issue from season one. I find a little bit right, which they should have cleared up. And for the most part, they have right. I find very little weird pacing, but this episode. Yes. Do you want me to take you there? Moves strangely so. to me. Make it so. I think that's it. Like with something so iconic as Star Trek, you just want to get it just Matrix. right, and you yeah. want to have the coolest idea. Me. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and the thing that feels truly Star Trek, and I do feel I like you know, obviously, this writer DC lost. Fontana was one of the people to well, call I if you wanted something to feel like lost, Star Trek. But right. But I this is not Star Trek. We're not trying to create an episode of Star Trek. We're trying you. to create an episode of Reboot with a little bit of Too a cute Star Trek flair to it, and it just doesn't quite. She'll get over it. This system error. Could your losing games have caused it? No, as angry as we are at the Spectrals, we would never permanently harm the system. I didn't think so. Glitch. Full system scan. Cursor, get your troops together. We're going on a hunt. So, you'll join us in our hunt for Spectrals? No, not Spectrals. Something worse. See, so yeah, we got that musical sting. You are not from our system. Why and now it's just to gonna kind of go silent yeah. for a bit. Systems. I almost wonder if this episode would have been more interesting if they had directed. agreed but to you and Matrix are no longer together. like go but in with each next? side. Oh, so it wasn't a fight a between yeah. Ships, yeah. Love and Andrea. Andrea. Oh, but that's if they were like, we're gonna like sort this out, and that would actually feel a lot more Star Trek to me, quite frankly, too. Yeah, I'll go with this guy, this team. But maybe they thought that we wouldn't care about this conflict if it wasn't centered on our main characters. Because I think there's an idea that like. Look, the tail. Not people about don't, them. Yeah, people don't care about conflict for characters who they're only going to meet for one episode. And in general, I would agree with that. But yeah, I think this, for something truly really Star Trek-ish, that does work because Star Trek is about yeah the idea of coming in and seeing how societies work. And well, I mean, like imagine they go in cooperatively, but like to each team, and then like Andrea's injured in their conflict. Yeah. And then that's the real issue. It's like that brings them in and then it's like, you've done this to her. Why? She only tried Our to help. Yeah. That Star Trek. No, I mean, they'd probably kill her, but <laughs> you are she, far she was from a red shirt. I there are hundreds yeah. of doors <laughs> opening throughout the system, but they all started here. Why? What is so special about this tear? It's not a natural tear. Someone created it. What kind of fools do you take us for? Of course someone created it. It was I do want to take friends, a moment here, and I can have a close-up to appreciate to Andrea's um, mismatched earrings, which I never properly noticed until recently. Like, both her earrings are like different types of shell. It's really cool. Listen to me! These tears, they're not spectral or hero in nature! No, they're not. See, she turns her head. Yeah. They're <laughs> viral. Looks to me like you got a virus in your midst. That's funny. I was about to say the same thing to you. The thing is, we also, I think we talked over it, but there was also just a conversation there where like one of the Spectrals brought up with Andrea her fight with Matrix. 
And then she was like, oh, we'll get back together. We always do. And it was clearly kind of the meant to be a line about it, how, like, conflict doesn't help anything and you can have conflicts but still love Sounds someone right. and if we, you know, work together the with game. them. But it was also Matrix. like, I can so if they were there always, no like, if it's just like, so oh, yeah, that was just a little fight. We're always like, then why why have the fight in the first place? If it was just like, we just knew we were going to get back together anyway. Yeah, like, what does that add to the episode? Not Again, precisely. maybe a thematic Bibles thing about how we have conflicts, but we, we sort them out, but I don't know. I, I just don't quite buy it. Detected. I'm not buying in. Well, it's funny because, like, device. it just makes you think of but the tip range, where Bob and Dot was so well. Yeah. yeah. They naturally Wait, have like fights glitch. because there's such different personalities. I think, you know, I think that's just it. Like, Matrix and Andrea's relationship is seen, is seen as, like, so even-handed. Right. That... Any sort Sorry, of conflict between them really feels that. like it's kind of put there just for the sake of being there. Yeah. And then here is where we go full, like, super friends. And it's <laughs> yeah. like, okay, like, where does this even come from? I, yeah. I'm not going to belabor the point much more than that, but that's maybe one of my, like, central issues with this episode. Still mad at me? What do you think? What happened to make them make up? Yeah, I'm like, this. that would mean so much more to me if I'd actually believed they'd had, like, a real fight. Maybe they, <laughs> that's what they do to stay, like... We must stop it! True, yeah, like, maybe, maybe they, they just kind of get complacent otherwise. Right, we have you to have our monthly fight. Alone. Well, that would be why it felt so contrived. <laughs> they're, they're very bad at writing their own comics. <laughs> I believe you. Spectrals, stand down! Heroes, at ease! Like it really felt like this part could have used some we music, have right? To set aside yeah. our prejudices and work together. Why? Good choice. <laughs> yeah, like you. Why? You doomed us all. Like they, I guess they convinced Brother, you. Yeah, no, you? that's true. You just had a big yeah. fight. Like, they, I like it seems happened. more like they surrendered. Like the they decided they were outgunned or something. <laughs> yeah, really. What the doctor ordered. What should we do with him? Kill him. Yeah. What happens <laughs> We're doing this Matrix style my now. My brother is still free. Soon our infection will be complete. You are all doomed. Doomed, I say. Oh, I do like that His she can, like, nerve pinch, like, panel. some kind yeah. of, like, gooey, ethereal space sparkle. Like, space sparkle. Yes. I sent a team to the principal office to oversee all repairs. Enzo, these the music that they do use here does feel very, like, thematic. Office. Yes. Like, that's a... I feel like I would have liked to have heard it more, in fact. Like, it's yeah. just... Even if like, this the is the same that's track. Great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe they did use it more and I just didn't notice? Because then I could see how they wouldn't have wanted to overkill it, but that just feels very, like, Star trek -y. The other one was open. Yeah, I know. <laughs> in. Whoa, was that a dead one? Did it, like, was that a flattened sparkle in the back? Look. Oh, I think it is. Yeah. Aww. Yeah, I think they mentioned it at some point. I followed these light bulbs to the principal office, and it's a good thing I did. I caught them open in a new tear. Then they were viruses as well. Maybe not. Frisk it, sniff. <laughs> Brisket always had a thing about viruses. Yeah, too late, Sprite. With I feel like Frisket's do virus. Not virus <laughs> that, okay, that's. Cute. I feel like Frisket's virus sniffing powers. Like, I would have appreciated them coming up more throughout the series. And not not as a criticism. I just like that he would uh, be able would to do awesome, that. And I would like, yeah. yeah, I would like to see more of that. I'm just gonna punch <laughs> this thing. Like. It ends now. How many times do I have to twist around I my know. idol? <laughs> that was a good expression on Andrea on Andrea's part. Oh, it wasn't yeah. part of it. No, I guess not. System, 
Out of danger? Yes. Good. Where I go, I go alone. Oh. He's deleted. Slim. Is that like the, the only like on-screen deletion we see of a sprite in the series? Because I remember if, like it seems notable to me the way they do it no. with like the glimmer and right. fade right. thing that he does. Warning. Incoming game. The only other time Warning. I remember seeing Incoming game. them dying it, or deleted Go. was the Medusa bug where they us. fell apart. Take yeah, so that was like a different way, way of doing it. But it's not the it. same. So yeah. much we can do to help. We have made great strides thanks to you. And in Cursor's name, we'll continue to do so. You must work together to mend and defend. Without it, all this would be for nothing. There will be peace. If not now, then I promise, by the next generation. Maybe those lines they could get in. Right. <laughs> Okay, but here's the thing, is that when I looked it up, I did see that that was Owen Hurley's first directing credit. Oh, so that so that might at least explain some of like the strange pacing things. I don't want to go too hard on a first-time animation director or like mm -hmm. totally blame him for it. It's usually like a combination of things, of course. But that, to me, was the closest thing to explaining how you could have a writer who had so much experience yeah. and still end up with such a clunky episode in my opinion i don't know i guess we talked over it but do you have any <laughs> fresh feelings on it now that you've seen it again <laughs> um no it's funny though that that is one of the ones that i do remember really well and i think i did like it because i like superheroes and yeah. i like that kind of stuff but i like as a as an adult watching it it's true i mean it is just um it's just messy and missing stuff yeah like i i love more. superheroes but this isn't a superhero episode it's a I know. Star Trek. like right, it, just, yes. I, it will not stop getting on my nerves <laughs> i just, guess that's it is like they could have created a better sense of uniformity in their other half yeah and it almost feels like they changed like if I, i've seen this happen in the writing process before where you go into an episode pitching one concept and then halfway through, you're just like, this isn't working. It needs something else. So you kind of ram something else in. Mm. And sometimes it works. And sometimes it leaves you with these weird Frankensteins. <laughs> right. Which is what I feel like this ultimately kind of turned into. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Like, I think all I'm, it's so funny. All I could imagine is just like all of those characters, but all in one outfit. I swear that would have made done it better. so much <laughs> like, more. Something. Yeah. And made it less about like introducing. Because I mean, again, there was that whole weird cutaway that was just about introducing two of the character superpowers. Yeah. And having them turn around so that someone could go, oh, no, they escaped. Even though that other person was there the whole time. Like it was. Yeah. <laughs> I do remember actually, funny enough, that was one moment that always stuck out of my head as being awkward and weird was when the blonde haired girl turns into the big Hulk yeah. woman. And then, but like, I even remember as a kid or a young adult, young person, I don't know, watching it yeah. and thinking that was just a weird moment. Like, why, why was, that was that there? there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Aside from showing, oh, this is what I can do. Yeah. Yeah. It did. It did come out a little bit strange. Yeah. Kind of awkward and contrived maybe. But I mean, that is our take on where no sprite has gone before. Mm -hmm. If you have a different take, if you absolutely love this episode, and maybe you love the very things about it that we didn't like, because like I'm not averse to weird stuff or Frankenstein-y stuff when it's executed a certain way. This execution just kind of sat wrong with me, but if you love it, let us know. I'm, I'm genuinely curious, and I promise I will not judge your tasted reboot. Right, and I also did not hate it as yeah. much as Robin did. But I can see where she's coming from. It is it is awkward. I think I just have certain pet peeves right. in certain TV episodes, and that's one of the ones that, that gets me. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, yeah, any last thoughts on where No Sprite has gone before? No, I'm surprised. I remembered so much of this one. Wow. Yeah. Because this is one I did not remember very well until I saw it again it's recently. Funny. I so. think I did, I did enjoy it, but I, like... Maybe when I was younger, I ate up the whole, like, oh, there's conflict between Matrix and Andrea. I can see that. Yeah, I right? would have eaten that up if I had been a young Matrix Andrea shipper, for sure. Now I'm just sure. like, oh, don't fight. Gosh. We uh, don't need this in our lives. Yeah, it's too stressful. <laughs> Relax. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I guess that's it for this episode. So until next time, stay frosty. And make it so.